Sleek, tender, and smooth, Hilda is a fantastic green bean. If you are like me and are not that crazy about green beans, then Hilda might be the one for you and possibly the kids or grandkids, as Hilda seems to be a less beanier bean. Seventeenth of May, I'm in zone five, and I want you to see how well that these Hilda runner green beans are doing. And I had originally started these in toilet paper tubes. And they are looking so fantastic. Hey guys, today is June 3rd. I'm in Northwest Ohio, Zone 5, and this is this little garden thing that a garbage picked a couple years ago. And I have got these Hilda green beans growing up it. Alright guys, today is June 12th. Look at how wonderful these beans are looking. Okay, you guys, today is June 17th. We're looking at these gorgeous little Hilda green beans. And it's about 11 o'clock. And you can see I'm in a part shade area. These can be grown in even more shadier conditions. Before, I had it right here where these beginning wildflowers are. And I grew it up on a gray striped mammoth sunflower and it did beautifully in those shady conditions. Gorgeous. Let's see. Oh, look at that. That's a beautiful picture right there. I have to come back and snag that. You guys, I, oh wait, hang on. There we go. Look. Look at our first little green beans here. And look at this. That little tiny one. Isn't that super cute? my finger around that one. Excellent guys, excellent. These are some of my favorite green beans because they're flat and when you pick them young the beans don't even seem like you have the inside of a bean which is not my favorite taste. Oh there's another one right there. Super super cute. But isn't everything cute when it's tiny or a baby? The most vicious animals in the wild are so cute when they're babies because they're a baby. Today is June 22nd and look at how well our Hilda beans are doing here. And there's a few of them that we can pick. I like them when they're really small, really tender. So I'm just going to go ahead and pick these. I'm going to put these in the refrigerator. These two probably need another day or two. Let's see. Oh, are they? Oh, so adorable. Check out my Etsy shop, T-Shirt Garden Company, featuring gardening, no mo may, sewing, tiny house, zen meditation designs. Link in box below. Today is June 26th. I am out here collecting some more of these Hilda Green Beans. And this is what I've gotten so far to date. I keep them in the refrigerator. But look at how many more we can pick today. And look how well we're doing here. There's some in the back. Look at all these big, gorgeous, white, fluffy, looks like creamy buttered popcorn blooms. So nice. Look at that. This is a stringless variety. So when they're about this big, I'm sorry my hands are dirty, but I garden. I assume you know that. This is when I like to pick them. Okay, no string. And then here's this about. Okay, so I started letting this sort of bundle up, tie up from the top, because there's only so much you can fit at the top. So now, let's see if we can direct it. I don't know, this looks the most scarce right here. Let's see if we have enough leeway to do that. 
Well, to start it, I think we will. Okay, so I'm just going to leave it there for the night. And I'm going to let it get used to the fact that I just bent it over here. I didn't bend it in half. I just repositioned it. And I'm going to put this leaf in between it because this leaf is actually stable already on this side and was not part of that grouping. So that's going to keep some of that in place to where this bend will kind of get used to it. And hopefully they will find it and be able to attach in a day or two down here. Look at these gorgeous blooms though. The flowers. You know what I mean. I might be getting tired. I've been out here quite a while. Oh, look at this one. This is a good one right here. Again, nice and tender. Oh, that one came right off. Excellent. Excellent. All right, so I'm going to pick these. I'm going to see what else is under here. I'm going to put it into my bowl, put it back in the fridge, and keep at it. All right, you guys, I got a real nice handful out of them. I'm just going to keep collecting them till I feel like I've got enough that's worth boiling a pot over. Hey, guys, so I have collected these green beans. These are the Hilda green beans for probably the last five to seven days. And now I've got a nice bowl full. And remember, they're stringless. They're flat. I've already taken off the tips outside. I've lightly rinsed them off. You really don't need to do too much more than that. And now I'm just going to boil them. And I'm going to put them in a rolling boil for about seven minutes. And then I'm going to season them. All right, you guys. Now our green beans are already steamed up. And I have sauteed them with just a little bit of olive oil. Garlic salt. Actually, a generous amount of garlic salt and a generous amount of Parmesan cheese. The cheap stuff, not the shaved stuff because you do want it to cling. And you, at least I do. I want to get a bite of that Parmesan in almost every bite, really. These are, believe it or not, I can eat these cold. I can just pick these right from the refrigerator and eat them cold because they're so flavorful. I love the fact that they are flat and they're not a beanie tasting bean. Hey guys, July 19th. Looking at our beans. Look at that. Isn't that stupendous? Got some more beans over here I'm gonna have to pick. And I keep picking them, putting them in a bowl in the refrigerator until I have what I consider a decent amount for two people and cooking them up. And you can see how these are starting to come out because I have run out of room to twist them around. But that's okay. That's also why I wanted to do this archway next to it so you can see the difference. Hey guys, July 24th and I've got more green beans out here to pick. All right, here we go. This is today's harvest. And you can see all of the tops came up for me. I just need to go and really just pinch off the bottom and it comes off incredibly easily. And then really I'll just drop it back into the soil like a chop and drop. It'll compost in. Now looking at these more curved ones, I will pick these when these are a little bit smaller because you can see, look at how this portion is way bigger than the top. So they don't really um, grow evenly. So I do have a tendency to pick these when I see this bigger growth. Because when you look here and you compare it to this, that sort of seems like it's going to be the same tenderness, the same texture, just curved and a little bit um, uneven growth. So I do grab those when they're a little bit earlier. Something like this. This is just slightly curved. It's longer and it's slightly curved, but you're, 
the growth looks even. So I will actually leave this, let this go for another day. And the other thing I want to point out here, since I have got four, let's say legs or stalks here, look how cute those are. Uh, that allows me to come in here and see a whole lot more. Now, if I were to have grown these up on a sunflower, which I have done before, I would really just have one stalk to run those up on. And since I have four, I could actually braid them, and you see how we braided that. And at this point, some of them now are just kind of like this right here. It's just kind of hanging out. Oh, hang on. I'll let this go one more day, too. Okay, guys, so here is my bundle. That's a pretty good size handful. And I'm going to let these collect for a couple days. Probably just one more day is all I'll need. And then I'll have a nice big bundle. Plus, on my plate, I'm gonna have a steak, I'll have half of this steak, um, that has been marinated in a teriyaki glaze. And I've got these fresh cucumbers that I grew, and I'm gonna have those nice and sliced up. I'll have some corn that I bought, didn't grow corn this year, potatoes or carrots, because I'm concentrating on some zucchini and some eggplant and lots and lots of little mini melons. All of this, minus the corn, came from my garden. And I am still composting my kitchen scraps as always. This one's full. I'm just waiting for some space in the garden to bury it all in place so that I can compost in place because I think that that is the best. All right, you guys, July 28th. And we're out here looking at Hilda, the Romano series. And this was the harvest that I got off today's picking. And I'm doing this every other day. And I like to pick off the tips while I'm out here. And I just put them in the ground so that I don't have to do anything extra when I get in the house. I've got a few that are probably going to need maybe another day or if you want them this tender you can pick them this tender not a problem this is a little bit too big for me but i went ahead and i picked it off anyway because they're down at the bottom sometimes you can't see everything way down at the bottom this is about the size right here that's pretty good so when i go to boil these i will probably just cut these in half so that they'll boil properly for the size uh, I do take my chair and I will reposition my chair around here about four different times. It's in kind of a partial shady area. So when it's windy and it's morning, it's very pleasant. Since it's short, well, I want a chair because I don't want to have to stoop down and do that. Um, I, yeah, I don't want to break my back for beans, basically. So that's why I'll move my chair about three, four different times, get different positions, you can get different angles and you can see what you've missed because you've moved your chair to those different angles. Very successful day today. I probably just need to have one more day and this is what I would consider to be enough for, actually that's enough for two people right there, but I'm not gonna go through that for two people. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll wait until I get a big mess of them and cook them up. August 12th. See that little piddly amount of beans over there? That's all we're getting from Hilda. Okay, you know she's getting older. They're starting to get yellowed out and rusted out. These leaves do not feel nice, new, and supple. They feel thicker. They feel a little bit more leatherier. And you can feel the veins more in the back. So, and it's August. I mean, she's given a good three months here. But remember, I started this archway over here. Same green bean as Hilda. 
and we're starting to get some lovely little new green beans right here for us. And since it's an archway, sit down, get under here, and pick these a little bit easier. Look at that. Isn't that going to be nice? So you guys, I'm going to pick these two right here. you guys let's have a nice little green bean lineup I thought maybe we would get the ruler out four inches nice they just get bigger from here this is about the size of my hand right here you know since none of you have chosen to hold my hand at all so that's about five five and a half inches there this is not as exciting as George Costanza's cookie lineup, or as delicious to me, but these are great tasting green beans. And this one comes in at around six and a half, seven inches. When they start getting about this big, you can start feeling that, number one, they get that lighter green, like that stretched out, it's gonna get bleached out, it's too big. You can start to feel the development of the beans in here as well. So probably just snap this one in half. So when I'm cooking, it sort of evens out to be one of these smaller, thinner ones for cooking time. But look at the difference in the color between those. You can just see it's starting to get bleached out right at where the sections come together, where the string normally would be, but you know, this is a stringless variety. September 5th, and look at these gorgeous green beans. The left are round, the right is flat. The right is our Hilda green beans, 60 days. Got them from Jung's, grow them almost every year that I grow green beans. Sometimes I take a break from green beans, guys, because you can get a lot. Over here, beautiful, beautiful, round. They do have a little bit of a fuzz on them, and I do get them when they're very young to where this one, there is no fuzz. They are slick and sleek and new and silky and satiny. These are a little peach fuzzy. These are Blue Lake, again, 60 days. Got them from Jung's. Super easy to grow. Both of these options are stringless. Okay, so now let's go ahead and read about our Hilda seeds, and I got them from Jung. Hilda Romano, 60 days, yields go on and on, good resistance to heat and plant disease, results in summer long harvest, and this that's very true. Um, of these, flat potted, 10 to 12 inch deep green stringless beans. Nothing beats their flavor when cooked or frozen. Also Hilda with an E. All right, so 10 to 12 inch uh, deep green. So listen, when they start getting this big, to me, they don't taste that good. We've already discussed prior a good size that I enjoy. Uh, they do go on and on. They're quite a fantastic giver. They will hold up through that heat and yeah, no disease. So this is a fantastic little bean here, guys. All right, now let's look at our seed packet because it gives us a lot of good information on here too. Now, um, as you already know, because I've already stated, I did not direct sow these this time. 
but that's normally how I do it. I really just wanted to try the greenhouse that I had and I just kept putting more and more stuff in there. And it turned out really well. And of course, when you start something in a greenhouse, like three weeks earlier, then you're going to start getting your fruit or vegetable three weeks earlier. But the germation time is just seven to 10 days. You just um, pop those direct sow, sow or into your pots, your cells, whatever you wanna do, one to two inches deep. And it does require moist, well-drained soil. And I am constantly cold composting in place. I'll do it all winter long. So all of the nutrients that I kind of zapped out of that soil this summer, I will be reworking and revamping um, all fall and all winter and early spring to where by the time I go to plant something again next year, it has got very nutrient rich, but yet when you put the shovel through, it's almost like butter. So it will be a well drained soil. All right, you guys, it is September 22nd and you can tell she's at the end of her life. I picked a lot of the pods off and I've already cold composted those as I had mentioned prior. Okay, so this is the same thing. This is the Hilda. I just planted it a couple months or weeks, months after this one here so that I had some succession beans. And you can see, even though it is almost the end of September, they're still going well for me. The high today is only supposed to be 68. So I do need to come out here and pick this. And just so you know, we did not say this in the Junks catalog, but this is a hybrid. It's stringless. Beans normally aren't stringless, so that's going to make it a hybrid normally. So we're not going to do anything with harvesting the beans on this. Once again, I want to thank you so much for watching. If you would be so kind and sweet as to subscribe, that would be absolutely wonderful. I would totally appreciate that. Thank you so much for watching and I invite you again to subscribe as I have been gardening for over 40 years and have a lot to teach, show, grow, review, experiment with, and my favorite, a specific variety, everything deep dive. So let's try new things together, mix it up, and have a glorious day.